The men convicted of bombing Sterling Hall always said they didn't mean to hurt anyone, but they ran and investigators worked to track them down and bring them to justice. Tony Galley tells us how all but one of the bombers have been held accountable. Anti-Vietnam War protesters on the UW-Madison campus in the late 60s drew the attention of police. They, they went to every damn rally there was. They knew everybody from um, uh, every radical group. Um, nobody knew these guys. Carlton Armstrong, Dwight Armstrong, David Fine, Leo Burt. Authorities say they used a truck bomb to obliterate Sterling Hall. Their target the Army Math Research Center and its connection to the war effort. Their victim, physics researcher Robert Fosnock. Did they set out to kill somebody? No, I don't think so. Did they set out to blow that building up and if somebody died, well, that's just the price you pay. That's what happened. Carl Armstrong spoke about it in a 1979 documentary. And I felt morally a sense of shame for taking someone's life. I didn't feel it was justified. Mike Zaleski prosecuted Carl Armstrong. I believe I asked him if a cross-examination, if you had to do this all over again, would you do it? And he said, yes. We don't want to fight anymore, but if we have to fight again, it'll be to take these steps. After a half century, there are still strong feelings about the men authorities say were responsible for the explosion, destruction, and the death here at Sterling Hall. And after 50 years, there is still an effort to locate and prosecute Leo Burt. Both Armstrongs and David Fine did prison time. Leo Burt, Burt was pretty smart, has not been found. Every year, I went through every piece of evidence. Former U.S. Attorney John Vaudry was ready to prosecute Burt. The system of justice, you don't give up just because the person has evaded you for all these years. Sterling Hall stands without traces of that domestic terrorism. Yet, authorities say the actions of four misguided anti-war protesters remain as relevant in 2020 as they were in 1970. In Madison, Tony Galley.